What's up, YouTube? Wes here again. So we got the 435 that was in the previous video going up against that 440. And I'm going to try to tear this thing down and do the same work that I done to the 440 to see if it makes it run any better. Which I know the comparison went really even because this is just a little less powered. I mean, it's pretty well the same saw, same CC, same displacement. And I think it's got like a tenth less horsepower or something like that. And it did have 18 inch bar and chain on it, which that chain is newer and sharper than the one that was on the 440. I've kept with that little 440 a little more than I have that one. But anyhow, I'm gonna get into it. I'm gonna try to walk you through the whole process that I've done, tear down and put back together. And it may have to be more than one video. I may do the tear down and then do the actual grinding on a video and then do a put back together and start and run comparison, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so with that being said, we're gonna first tear it down. If you like what you're seeing, like, subscribe, hit the bell, leave me a comment. Uh, if you know about port and saws and you see something I'm doing wrong or that I can improve on, uh, leave it in the comments. Like say, I'm not a pro uh, saw mechanic or nothing like that. I'm just an enthusiast. So with that being said, we'll get started. First, it don't really matter which way you go about it. <clears throat> this part, getting the getting the simple stuff off. <clears throat> Taking the bar and chain cover off. I got this little 12 volt uh, DeWalt impact that I use for uh, taking saws apart and putting together and whatnot sometimes. <clears throat> I like to hand torque stuff and feel it, you know, feel how it uh, was when I take it off sometimes, but I like this 12 volt one because it's, it's not terribly stout. I have an 18 volt uh, regular impact that I use for like the clutch and stuff like that, but this, it's a little bit too much power. You'll strip stuff out if you ain't careful with this. Yeah. This, you ain't gotta have this, but it just makes life so much, so much easier. And I try to keep everything together as I go, you know, in a sense, because I took that 440 apart and put it back together surprisingly a whole lot better than I thought that I would and cleaned it up. You wouldn't believe how salt dirty that saw was after 10 years of use. I had that thing about 10 years and that was my very first, I guess what you could say, name brand saw or whatever. You know, I've had some cheap, cheap ones or whatever, but uh, Fit a lot of wood with it. We used to heat with a wood burning stove or outdoor wood burning hardy stove. It heated, heated, heated. It heated the water and the uh, the water to the hot water heater. 
and that's what we run off it run into a radiator and our fan return blew off it and that's what we heated our home with uh, <clears throat> so it, it that 440 would cut many a uh, rick of wood for sure right here i've got my handy dandy homemade socket uh this is for big saws and this one's for small saws the only thing that i've noticed on these you gotta watch if you ain't careful and i don't know if uh store-bought ones are like that too you gotta kind of be careful that you don't knock the springs out i knocked the spring off this saw the other day and uh Didn't know it until I started up. It was making an awful racket, so that's what that boils down to. These things are fairly simple once you get used to taking them apart and putting them together. I've done it for practice just to. So I don't look like a nut on YouTube, really. Which I may look like a nut anyway. But that's okay. <clears throat> because... Sometimes it's good to be a nut. Like say the clutch, you gotta spin it in four to get it off. It's reverse thread. So if you're sitting there uh, trying to loosen it up, you're just tightening, tightening that thing up. On the flywheel, it actually loosens up. First, I'm gonna take this. And I don't think there's any distinctive order you've got to go in. You don't have to do it like what I, what I do. Uh, unless you want to. I just, I do it for fun. So I'm not, not in no real big hurry. Plier set today at uh, the good old tractor supply. Five bucks on sale. And I believe they're going to come in handy for these little, these little saw projects that I'm starting to do. I'd say I'm going to try to have, I've got some trees to go cut at my friends slash neighbors. Painted a great big bunch of trees, but it's a. Uh, <clears throat> Sometimes them, these springs and clips come out of them uh, boots, and it ain't no big deal. You just stick this, put this wire back in right here. It's got a little hole in it. I've had a problem out of that. This one actually, <clears throat> at one time, was 
this saw was given to me, it wasn't running. It was backfiring, spitting, and sputtering. It'd run good when it was cold. Uh, it'd get hot, and what it was, it had a bad, bad coil on it. Uh, so I had to get a new one. So I've had a little experience with coils, but this it was before I was doing YouTube videos, so I don't have much footage of that. But yeah, it was. It would. Uh, I can get run good. You first start it up, give her a couple reds, cut one or two little little limbs, like what you cut with these, and I'll go on and go backfiring, spitting, sputtering like it's about to blow up. <clears throat> and I just I kind of looked it up on YouTube and uh, and the good old inner web and. Uh, found that that could be the problem. I tried it. Of course, it wasn't a very expensive kind of deal, so. It was worth a shot for me and, and fixed it, so, and I've been running it ever since. These fuel lines, I don't typically pull on. I try to push them off, which this thing is full of fuel. I think it is. Actually, I'm gonna go dump that out real quick. I'm gonna dump it out and dump it into dump it into my gas jug that I use to dump. I keep an old gas jug around to uh, to dump fuel in. I'm working on saw just that way it ain't a daggone mess. y'all can see all this all right i believe you can that's great i don't want y'all to miss out on nothing i bet it probably would hurt you there you go well pour gas all over your table So I still got a little in the primer bulb. I just run this saw. I made that video for y'all. Uh, running it against that 440. So I know the 440 definitely runs better. I don't know. I didn't have. I've got a timer wheel coming and uh, <clears throat> crankcase pullers and. Flywheel puller and all that kind of stuff coming. It ain't come in yet because <coughs> uh, just took a notion that I was going to try to learn it. I watch uh, a lot of YouTube videos myself on this kind of stuff. I watch the uh, the Iron Horse, Ten Man Saws, and Bell Hopper. Uh, I watch one of Bell Hopper's vids to to do that. Uh, and there was another guy that I watched to do that 440, but uh, I mean, I didn't get any, they didn't come show me how to do it or anything, but you know, I watched it on YouTube and uh, kind of went from there. So I don't, I don't have any numbers of what I did, which I really didn't do anything, but uh, just makes everything flow better. I've got a short of that and I'll show you when I do this one. Uh, I didn't, I didn't advance the timing or change the timing or anything like that. I opened up the exhaust port some and the intake port, but not at the actual cylinder wall, just back in the flange and with the upper like intake transfers, I kind of rounded them and smoothed them as well. So like I say, it's uh, it's not like that. Uh, I got any, got real serious for doing any machine work. I don't know how to do that. But I would love to start learning how to do that. Say, uh, Iron Horse, Tin Man, and Bell Harbor, they got really good videos, which they're a whole lot bigger YouTube channels than 
what than I am. So y'all probably know about them a lot quicker than you know about me. But just for instance, if you didn't, uh, I'll tell you, I had to get a new primer and all that and it's kind of broke. That 440 was older than this one and it, I didn't have no problems with it. Moving a little faster on this one than I, what that I did. On that 440, I went, I went kind of slow just because that was my first time tearing a saw completely down at all, like plumb down to the taking the cylinder off and the piston and all that. But it wasn't terrible on this saw. I don't know that it will be, it won't be, you know, on other saws. I do have my 395 getting ported by a gentleman. Tennessee. <clears throat> I'm in the southern part of Kentucky. <clears throat> There's three bolts that hold. three bolts that hold uh, the filter housing on and it's got a little rubber plug in the bottom. That rubber plug, when you first take it out the first time, it's a little bit of a bear. And you gotta push the throttle up. If not, it hangs on the, cause it's old school, it's got a linkage and it got a cable. So the hard part of the, sideways and throw that linkage up. So what I did was I twisted it to the right if the handle is to you. It pulled that out and then that let that come past that and I just kind of nudged it in there. And then to get that arm out of the throttle linkage rather you should be able to take it just twist it bigger. Twist it up and out, and boom, there it is. So, like I say, I try to keep all that jazz together. Lost that screw for a minute. Didn't want to get it, didn't want it to get away from me. And then you got a fuel line here at the bottom on the carburetor that goes down to the tank. We'll get to that in a moment. This carburetor just kind of clips in this, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what you call that, I'm gonna call it a breezeway. Took the cylinder. Like I say, I like to use a flat screwdriver to slide fuel lines off. I don't like to tug on them because more times than none, you'll end up, you'll end up ripping them jokers. That's no fun for nobody. And this just snaps on as well to the back of the carburetor. It, it uh, snaps on, snaps on. Let's see if y'all can see what I'm up to, oh yeah. This thing's got a little gift here, so you can get in there with a long extension skimmer. I mean, I probably wouldn't want to bear her over. You know? It's got a seal in it. And when I did my 440, as I was taking it apart and putting it together, really putting it back together, I, I blew everything out. And what I did to make it easier, 
somewhat. This time I'm gonna do a little better at it. But I try to put all the bolts and screws, or bolts, rather, back into the park like park part like what it came like what was on it. That way I didn't get all <clears throat> confused on what to do. Uh, one Allen. Allen screw pretty much takes this whole saw apart except besides the exhaust. This is a 5 seconds Allen, Allen bit. It'll take the whole saw apart. But that impact really helps. I break them things loose because the ones in my 440, they hadn't been took off since, uh, since it was probably installed new. And they were about rusted in there. If I hadn't had an impact, then I tried it with a regular them T handle Allen's there on the table. Okay. And when I did my 440, beans already had everything apart. I uh, went ahead and put a new, blew everything out, cleaned it out real good. I found that WD 40 does really well on taking out or breaking down the grease and oil that uh, I'm gonna leave that in there. It just slides into a rubber mount. It ain't threaded all the way. This one's not threaded all the way, so if you get to that part and you think, crap, where's that go? It just sits in a little rubber bushing here. It threads into the saw casing and it just is a straight shaft into the rubber bushing. But yeah, I, uh, Saying. Talking so much. Oh yeah, I went ahead and put a new fuel filter on, cleaned up, found out that WD-40 does wonders cleaning stuff. And I blew out this, the bearings and in, in the, on the shaft here and try to clean them out because they get a little grease and oil and sawdust up in here because behind here it's just kind of open. Uh, like on my Echo, that 4510 that I put the oil in that video, it had a black piece in behind there that kind of kept all that clean. I didn't want to wash the bearings out uh, by spraying too much cleaner or whatever in there, so I did use a little WD-40, took my air hose low and just kind of blew it, and then I put some two-cycle oil back on it. That's how I did that, which I'll show you that when I get there. Next time around. So maybe it ought to be about broke loose, other than I, it does have the two fuel lines. Oh, and the handle here. You gotta take this handle loose. Last time on my 440, I took the whole handle off of it, but I don't, I don't think that you got to do that, honestly. We'll see right here real quick. It's still hitting in that bushing right there. I should have maybe left it out and not pushed it in so far. That uh, should have broke loose. Yeah, okay. But I am gonna slide that back in the case. And when you go to put that back together, you have to make sure this bolt right here is, is out. Because if not, it is a bear to get back together. And also what I found out, I guess, I don't know if this is a men or what, but on my 440 and my, and this one, because I looked at this one as I was putting my 440 back together to make sure I wasn't missing something. It's got like a little vent there, a white little stubby sticking out there. It looks like a fuel line was hooked to it, but it doesn't, it doesn't. I guess it's like to say, it's just a, a mint. All right, now let's get all that off. Coming over here, and there's four cylinder bolts. And they're the same same thing. They're the, uh, small Allen that I was telling you about. Stay tight, I might have to 
turned over my big one. Man, that 440 one ain't not as big. That's what I'm saying with these little ones. Sometimes the bolts won't come out, so I know when I put them back with the little one. Uh, I know it may have a little more torquing power, but I know I'm not going to over, over torque. This one, to me, everything that I've ever done to a saw, it will not over torque. Like if you're going into metal, which I ain't saying bear down on it, but if you go plastic to plastic or coarse threads into plastic, now I have stripped a couple out, being a little silly. But for the most part, metal, metal, it won't. It, it tightens them up to me just about right. Uh, a lot of people have problems with mufflers coming loose. Uh, after they do a mod or something, I use this little bad boy to, to tighten them up, uh, start it up, get the muffler hot one time, and go recheck them. 90% of the time, they're not loose. But if they already tighten them up there, and that's the last time I've checked them on some saws, I've done an Echo muffler mod, and I've checked it like three times, and they've never gotten loose yet. So. I was pretty tickled about that. Now this is a little tight at first. Of course, you got your base gaskets here and all that kind of stuff. I didn't pull the plug out, but I'll get that. Uh, that's what I was talking about on my 440. That's kind of ramped. It says like this, it's kind of ramped down, and I just opened it up. And then these, I just brought back to flow, which in the port video, or my grinding video, I'll show you that. So, uh, unfortunately, to get this out of there, you do have to take the flywheel off. Uh, if not, she ain't coming out. It will get loose, but, or it will try to, but uh, the flywheel hits on the, the thing, the such a thing on the casing. Let me get my, my hammer back. I may be doing this wrong, I don't know. Anybody knows that's better at saw work than I am, let me know. But I kind of did this same thing on my 440. It worked out pretty good. Well, this, Cause this is all like open case, I guess, or whatever, all this cell dust around it. I mean, I could have blowed it out, but it's so tight in there, you can't really blow everything out. So I took all this apart and cleaned it. And you end up gotta cleaning this anyway. And then on my, 440, I got all the carbon crap off that piston. Yeah, I don't know why my 440 is too hard down in there. You don't want to pry this little gray cover right here. There's a little gray cover. I don't know if you can see that. Let me check it. Let me check it. I hope I lost this whole video. Uh, but anyway, you don't want to pry right here. 
you want to you want to make sure this is good but if you cry right there it's gonna mess that up that's don't need to be messed up for sure Screws out and everything. That's the cylinder, so I need to keep that with the cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. This part of your oil and all that kind of jazz. It may take you a minute on your saw to get this rotor off. But come off there so anyway get that off there like that spin that out and boom it's out and that's pretty much how you tear down and then of course I took all that out and cleaned it as I went uh, that's pretty much how you disassemble a 435 or 440 e or 440 Husqvarna thanks and have a great day